Today we're going to talk about regular polygons. On the formula chart that was given to you in the first lesson, we discussed regular polygons to find the area you would take one half the apothem times the perimeter. All right, so the apothem, here's the explanation for him today. The apothem goes from the center of the polygon and it is the perpendicular bisector of the side. All right, so let's, let's process that for just a moment. I have him in pink from the center of my square to the side. So here he is in pink. Perpendicular bisector means he's going to form a 90 degree angle and he is going to bisect the side of this square. So that would be half of the side here and the other half would be here. But guys, look what it forms for us. The line coming from the angle to the center of the polygon <clears throat> is your radius. It will bisect the angle. So here I've put the radius in green. It's going from the vertex angle to the center of the polygon. This polygon is a square, so we know that each angle of a square is a 45 degree angle, uh, excuse me, is a 90 degree angle. Therefore, the radius will bisect it into a 45. So what I did was I removed this small triangle and placed him over here. Because guys, do you see that that now creates a 45, 45, 90 triangle? So we are right back to our special right triangles. Remember, across from the 45 is X. But guys, look what he also is in this problem, the apothem, because he's running from the center of our square to the side. Then we have our radius, which is across from the 90 degrees, which is x square roots of 2. So what if we took this same apothem and radius and placed him into a triangle? So remember, your apothem goes from the center of the triangle to the side, and he is the perpendicular bisector of the side. So remember, it's going to chop that base into two congruent pieces. But guys, this is an equilateral triangle. So when we take our radius from the center of the polygon to the vertex, it's going to bisect this angle. If he is an equilateral, he had an angle of 60 degrees, which will now create a 30 degree angle at the base. So what I did, I, same thing as above, I took the triangle out, creating my 30, 60, 90. Across from the 30 is X, but look who he also represents, the apothem. Across from the 60 is X square roots of 3, and across from the 90 is 2X which also represents our radius. So guys, we're going to take our apothem and our radius, and we're now going to place him into a hexagon. All right, so now, still the exact same thing as above. Your apothem goes from the center to the side, and he is a perpendicular bisector, chopping that base into two congruent pieces. Your radius goes from the center to the vertex, which is now bisecting that angle. So guys, if you think back to uh, the unit before, we talked about n minus 2 times 180 over n. And so from there, we could determine that the angle of a hexagon is always 120 degrees. So therefore, when your radius is drawn and he bisects the angle, he will create the base angle of a 60 degree triangle. All right, so from here, I just simply took that triangle and removed him. Across from the 30 is X. Across from the 60 is X square roots of 3, but it also represents the apothem. Across from the 90 is 2X, but in this case, he also represents the radius. So guys, now what I'm going to do with you is taking these notes, I'm going to work an example of each so that you can see exactly how it will be laid out in your worksheet. All right, so the first one that we have is a square. So let's label him. 
I like to put a label on them because then that refreshes my mind on the properties of a square. Let's identify what we're given. So notice that our line is coming from the center to the vertex angle. So let's think about that. In a square, we know that all angles are 90 degrees. So therefore, this radius will create a 45 degree base angle. When I draw my apothem from the center to the side, I know that he is perpendicular. So he will form a 90 degree angle. So refresh, across from the 45 is x, across from the 45 is x, and across from the 90 is x square roots of 2. So guys, a very simple way when you're looking at this to save you a little bit of time instead of setting up your x square roots of 2 equals 6, if you take half of your radius and put it with the square root of 2, that will always give you your x. It's a very simple trick. So take half of your whatever your radius is and put it with the square root of 2. If you need a little bit of refresher, x square root of 2 is equal to 6. Rationalize your denominator. <clears throat> and you would get 3 square roots of 2. <coughs> but again, you do not have to show this. You can take half of your 6 and put it with square root of 2. All right, so guys, just like before, we're still finding area and perimeter. So we can very easily get that our perimeter. So remember, when we drew the apothem, guys, that cut the base into two congruent pieces. So if this side is 3 square roots of 2, then we know this side will be 3 square roots of 2, which will give us a side length of 6 square roots of 2. So most common mistake that students make is using this as the entire length of the side. So make sure you double it to get your 6 square roots of 2. So for your perimeter, one side is 6 square roots of 2, and there are four of them. If you're using a calculator, make sure that you put this guy into parentheses. If not, it will not multiply it properly. Outside times outside, 6 times 4 is 24 square roots of 2. And we're dealing with inches. Remember, two marks mean inches. So do not forget your units of measure. To find the area, guys, we know it's side squared, right? So that's one way you could do it. You could take your 6 square roots of 2 and square him. 6 times 6 is 36. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, which will give you 72 inches squared. Hey, but guys, say you forgot that. Say you forgot uh, area of a square is side squared. You can also use your apothem times your newfound perimeter. Now, I will tell you, in this case, that is a little bit harder to do. It's just more complex. Hard is not the best word to use right there. Just more complex. So remember, you can always use apothem times perimeter over 2. Your apothem is 3 square roots of 2. Your perimeter was 24 square roots of 2 all over 2. Now, I'm, I'm envisioning you saying, nope, not doing that. That looks too hard, but just stay with me, okay? Let's reduce where we can. Do you see that 24 and 2 will easily reduce to 12? Outside times outside, 3 times 12 is 36. Inside times inside, so the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, and you get 72 inches. Now, me personally, yeah, this guy's a lot easier to work with. But if you don't recognize that, this will give you the exact same answer. Area and perimeter of a square using the radius and apothem. So let's look at a triangle. Guys, this is an equilateral triangle, which means we know that all angles are 60 degrees. We're given a radius, and we're going to draw our apothem here. He is a perpendicular bisector, 
So remind yourself that he is going to bisect your base into two. So if this were an equilateral triangle, then each angle would be 60. Therefore, your radius will chop this into a 30 degree angle. So we have now created a 30, 60, 90 triangle within our equilateral. Remind yourself, across from the 30 is x, across from the 60 is x square roots of 3, and across from the 90 is 2x. Guys, I'm a very visual person, so the more information I have on my paper, the easier it is for me to see. So 2 times what gives us 12, so we know that that guy is 6. And then that gives us a base of 6 square roots of 3. But again, guys, let me remind you that that's only half of your base. You have to double him. So if I take the 6 square roots of 3 and double him, I now have a base of 12 square roots of 3. And I need that because for my perimeter, I know one of the sides is 12 square roots of 3. And I have three sides. Outside times outside, 3 times 12 is 36 square roots of 3. And guys, one mark means feet. So there is our perimeter. Area, <clears throat> one half base times height is what probably comes to mind when you're thinking about an equilateral triangle, but there was also a formula that said side squared, square roots of 3 over 4. But guys, on this one, my advice would be to use what you have, apothem times perimeter over 2. We found that the apothem here is 6. We just found that our perimeter is 36 square roots of 3, and we're going to take half of that. So guys, if you're going to do the work and find the apothem in the perimeter, you might as well put it to good use. Simplify where you can. 6 over 2 we know is 3. Outside times outside. 3 times 36 is 108 square roots of 3 feet squared for your area. So again, if you're going to do the work of the apothem in the perimeter, put it to use. And then the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm dealing with a hexagon. So guys, the easiest way to remember this is that anytime you have a hexagon, you're dealing with 120 degrees. Now, I caution you because in uh, the next unit, uh, excuse me, in the next lesson, we will deal with um, angles that are, do not form special right triangles. So we're going to have to revert back to our trig. But for now, we have our 30, 60, 90, and we're going to use those guys. So I have a radius drawn from the center to the vertex, and if the entire angle is 120 degrees, I now know that my base angle is 60. I'm going to draw my apothem from the center to the side, reminding myself that this will create two congruent pieces. And I now have formed a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Across from the 30 is x, across from the 60 is x square roots of 3, and across from the 90 is 2x. So we can very easily see 2 times what gives us 4. So we know that this guy is 2, and we know that our apothem is 2 square roots of 3. Remind yourself that that is only half of your base. So when you double it, you get a base of 4. So for the perimeter, we're going to take our base. We have 6 sides. 6 times 4 is 24, and we're dealing with centimeters. We have 24 centimeters for perimeter. Area, apothem times perimeter over 2. So guys, we found an apothem of 2 square roots of 3. We just found a perimeter of 24, and then we're going to take half of all of that. All right, so what you're going to probably notice is the 24 and the 2. 
So that's going to reduce to 12, right? Outside times outside, 2 times 12, 24, square roots of 3, and we're dealing with centimeters squared. Now guys, for the sake of time and the length of the video, I've talked rather quickly, so if at any point you need to pause the video, go back, look at a particular problem, please feel free to do so. I just don't want the videos to be too long in length. All right, now we're going to go into something called length of arc and area of sector, okay? So let's first talk about, and let me give you a visual of what that means. So guys, when we talk about length of an arc, I've put him in yellow, and we're talking about the outside measure of the circle. And we're talking about the length between two points on a circle. All right, so let's think back. So we've been dealing with squares and triangles and uh, hexagons. So let's think back to circles. When we're talking about the outside of a circle, guys, we're talking about the circumference. So remind yourself that the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. That's all we're saying right there. But do you see or would you agree that we just want a fractional piece of this circle? We don't want the whole thing, right? We just want this very small piece between point A and point B. That's what it means by percent. We just want a small percentage. So to find that percent, we're going to take whatever angle, I started very nice and easy with you with a 90 degree angle, and we're going to put him over 360 because we know all the way around a circle is 360 degrees. So whatever angle you're given here, you will place over 360, and we're going to multiply him by the circumference because when you're asked for a length of an arc, you're talking about a piece of the circumference. But now, guys, we're going to move into area of a sector. I highlighted him in pink, and I also highlighted the part of the circle that we're talking about in pink. We're talking about, we want to know the area of just this piece of pi, okay? So again, area, remind yourself, is pi r squared, because we only want a small percentage. We only want this percentage right here formed between the points A and B. So to find that, again, you're going to take your angle, Place it over 360 because that angle is only a fractional piece of the circle, right? And now we're going to multiply him by area instead of circumference because we want the area of the sector. So take a second. If you need to write this down, pause the video. And if I were going to write anything, it would be these two formulas that I have highlighted and maybe even draw the circle and put the two colors if you're a visual learner like myself. I'm going to give you three examples on finding both length and area of sector. So worksheet number two, which is assigned for tonight, the front part will deal with the first part of this lesson, and the back side of the worksheet will deal with length of arc and area of sector. All right, here's our first example. And I'm going to place it in two columns. First column, length of arc. And second column, area of sector. Guys, if you need to remind yourself, place those formulas right underneath. Measure the angle over 360. And if we want the length, we're going to multiply him by the circumference, which is 2 pi r. If we want the area, we're going to do the same thing, measure of the angle over 360, but now this time we're going to multiply him by pi r squared. Okay, here we go. So let's draw this guy. You have your basic shape of your circle. We're going to make this guy 9. Here's our point A and our point B. And for the sake of the first example, let's just keep it simple and use a 90 degree angle. Remind yourself that length, 
we're talking about the outside piece of the circle between points A and B. So we're going to take our 90 degree angle, placing it over 360, and we're going to multiply by 2 pi. And guys, R stands for radius. Radius is from the center of the circle to the side. I've given you a radius of 9. <clears throat> now, some of us know that 90 over 360, do you see that that's just one-fourth of your piece of, uh, one-fourth of your circle? But hey, say you didn't recognize that. 90 divided by 360, it gives you 0.25, but let's keep it in fractional form. So we're going to hit the math button right here. It's already highlighting fraction. We're going to hit it one more time. One-fourth. So we're going to say one-fourth times, guys, 2 times 9 gives us 18 pi. Remember, do not do anything with your pi. Do not plug in 3.14. Do not use your pi symbol. We're going to treat him like a variable. We're going to leave our answer in terms of pi, which means your answer should have the pi symbol in it. 1 times 18 is 18 over 4 pi. Now guys, 18 over 4 can be reduced. If you do that in your calculator, you'll get 9 over 2 pi, and we're just going to use units. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. 90 over 360 times pi, and our radius is 9, and we're going to square him. So we just reduce this guy, 1 over 4. 9 squared is 81 pi. Now, 1 times 81 over 4. Guys, if you type that into the calculator, 81 divided by 4, gives you a fraction, but math enter enter will tell you that that is as simple as that fraction can be. We're going to use units squared because I did not give you a unit here in your example. So now we have the length of arc and area of sector. Remember, length of arc is on the outside. Area is this piece on the inside. All right, so let's go to our, our second example. And let's use an angle measure slightly different than 90. I think we all feel pretty comfortable with 90. So let's get out of our comfort zone just a little bit. <clears throat> this is point A. This is point B. We're going to find the exact same thing again. Length of arc, area of sector. So formula at the top tells us to take our angle over 360 times 2 pi and our radius, which is 12. Now we know this is our radius because it goes from the center to the side of our circle. 150 divided by 360 gives us a nice decimal, so we're going to hit the math button, enter, enter, and it will give us a fraction of 5 over 12. 2 times 12 will give us 24 pi. All right, so guys, let's watch this. We have 5 over 12, and we're multiplying him by 24. So if you do that in your calculator, you get a nice simple 10 units. We're talking about length, so if you revert back to the first video, it's the same thing as perimeter, right? Circumference and perimeter, because that's around the outside of the circle. On the first, we were doing the outside of polygons. Area of sector, we're going to take our 150 over 360 times pi. Our radius is 12, and we're going to square him. So we can see that this guy reduces to 5 over 12 times 144 pi. So in your calculator, parentheses 5 divided by 12, and we're now going to multiply him by 144, and we get 60 pi units squared, because guys, we're dealing with area. All right, last 
last one. Kind of another feel-good angle. Let's use 45. And I'll give you a radius of 16. Same two things. Length, area. So we're going to take our 45 degree angle, place him over 360, times 2 pi and our radius of 16. Now guys, 45 over 360, if 90 over 360 was 1 fourth, this guy is going to be 1 eighth. Again, place it in your calculator, math enter enter will give you 1 eighth. 2 times 16 is 32 pi. So guys, 32 over 8 can be reduced to 4 pi units. So here is your length. So we're talking about this piece of the circle between A and B. Now, area, 45 over 360, times pi radius squared. We just reduced this guy, so we know he's a 1 eighth. 16 squared in your calculator will give you 256. Remember, leaving your pi alone, treat him like a variable. 256 over 8 will give you 32 pi. We're dealing with area, so he needs to be units squared. So guys, tomorrow we will build on this, and we will find segments of the area of the sector. So, if you need to, go back, review this lesson again. We have it posted in notes and in video. And this correlates with your worksheet number two homework assignment.